Nevada's cultural heritage is known worldwide and it's as varied as our bright neon cities and rugged wilderness landscapes. Every week, the Nevada Department of Cultural Affairs brings a piece of that heritage to your living rooms through our documentary series, Exploring Nevada. I'm producer and host Gwen Clancy. Welcome to the colorful world of cultural affairs. In our program today, we'll take a look at the Nevada Center for the Book, which is housed at the Nevada State Library in Carson City. The center operates in affiliation with the United States Library of Congress. We want to draw your attention to a couple of annual literary competitions aimed at students. In 2009, Carson Valley Middle School happened to make an exceptionally strong appearance in the Letters About Literature competition. I'm always looking for contests that my students can enter. I think it really helps them take their writing to the next level of publishing it and feeling like other people are reading it and appreciating it. The Letters About Literature contest asks students to talk about their connection with the book. They write a letter to the author of a book that has touched them, that they find similarities in their own lives, and it's really an intimate way for them to communicate to the author how the book changed their lives, how it helped them, and what inspired them about this author's writing. So there are three levels in Letters About Literature. Level one is for grades four through six, level two is for grades seven and eight, and level three is grades nine through twelve. And we were very fortunate um, at Carson Valley Middle School to have first place in the state of Nevada in level two and level three. I had a student from my ninth grade class who won level three, which is grades nine through twelve, and that was really impressive. She wrote a letter to Greg Mortensen, the author of Three Cups of Tea, which was actually a summer reading assignment that my students are doing this summer as well. For the book I chose was Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen, who built schools for girls in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And he's just like a regular guy and he, he was a part-time nurse and he just accomplished this great task just by putting his mind to it. Reading this book kind of impacted my life because it showed me that if you can just tough out the hardest parts of your life, like where, you know, the darkest chapters of your life, if you can just tough it out, you can turn your life around and you can have the willpower to do anything. This is the letter I wrote to Greg Mortensen for the, comp for the contest. All right. Dear Mr. Mortensen, your book, Three Cups of Tea, told of your life's accomplishment. It guided me through your adventures. It led me through your successes, but more importantly, your failures and how you got through them. Your book has helped me through one of the hardest times of my life. My grandmother gave the best hugs. When she hugged you, it didn't feel like only her arms were around you. It would feel like her spirit was envelop enveloping you in a warm, comforting way. When I was sad or upset, that was the way my grandmother would hug me. She would hold me and let me cry while she stroked my cheek with her work-worn hands. When I finally would cry myself out, she would let me go and smile. I didn't know when she started hurting. It, I just know that one day she seemed fine and then the next she was in so much pain she could barely talk. We took her to the hospital and found out she had cancer. My grandmother died within the week. During most of the funeral, I was numb. I just couldn't believe that my grandmother was really gone. I kept, I kept expecting the whole thing to be a joke, that my grandmother would jump out from behind a tree, scare me, and tickle me until I laughed. It wasn't until I touched the cold, smooth, dark brown wood of her coffin that I realized she was really gone. As the tears started trickling down my face, I could almost hear, I could almost feel my grandmother's rough but gentle hands on my face. After that, I stopped trying. I practically gave up on life. What was the point? Everything you know and everything you loved could be taken away from you so quickly. That thin fiber of life that you clung so dearly onto could be snapped so easily. My grades plummeted, my teachers disliked me, and my friends avoided me. A couple months after I had given up, I thought about trying to turn my life around, but bringing my grades up and making up with my friends after so long seemed impossible. That was when I read your book. When you were first starting out trying to raise money to build the school in Corpy, all the odds were stacked up against you. You had little money, no job, and no home. Stacked on top of that was an even more tragic fact. You had lost your dearly beloved sister, and yet you kept going, you kept trying, and you didn't give up. 
You persevered and pushed through what was perhaps the darkest chapter of your life. Your courage, determination, and strong willpower has inspired me. You loved your sister the way I loved my grandmother. You were also in a rut like I was, not sure of what to do and how to do it. You, however, were alone facing the world, whereas I had my parents who love and support me to this very day. So if you could turn your life around through sheer willpower and de determination, then I could no doubt do the same. To this very day, I still dearly miss my grandmother, but your book has provided the strength with which I can endure the pain and longing. So I thank you for helping me to find my willpower and for getting my life back on track. I think that writing this letter was a really good way for me to like express my feelings because I don't like to talk about how I feel about you know tragedies or you know bad parts of my life. I just like to like hide it. And so I think writing this actually was a good way for me to like realize like how I feel half the time and you know how to overcome that and how to get over it. Now I kind of feel like nothing is too big or too hard to accomplish. If you break it down and you really put your mind to it, then you can accomplish anything. This was an optional assignment. The students had a choice of several different contests that they could enter. And so the students who chose this particular contest, because it was one of the more challenging assignments, really chose it because of a connection that they had to a book, a book that touched them or moved them or changed their lives. So I got to know my students through these letters better than I had through even their own personal narratives because they really talked about moments in their lives that were transformative. Sometimes I was surprised at books that students had read in elementary school that still stuck with them and still were things that they thought about. And one of the winner's stories actually surprised me because she seemed to me such a confident, such a gregarious student, so popular, and she wrote about feeling like an outcast. And she wrote to Lori Hals Anderson, the author of Speak, which is a great book about a young girl who experiences a date rape and loses her ability to speak and her ability to communicate and is also ostracized quite a bit by the community of her school. Dear Lori Hals Anderson, in third grade, I was considered the outcast because of the way I acted and looked. I was stuck in a class being the only white child and people would make fun of me and ridicule me. It was the worst thing ever, hearing I never belonged in that area. Over the years, I suffered from being called names, being outcast, and being used. No one should ever be hurt because of who they are, and I know that. That is why I'm always displeased when people call each other names for no reason. Being made fun of is one of those things where you just want to punch in the face and let your anger out, but you have to suppress that and hopefully get through it. When I was 10 years old, I constantly moved back and forth from one place to the next, always had to make new friends. Finally, when I got settled and was getting adjusted to life, rumors spread about me. I had no idea what was going on, and soon enough, I was an outcast again and always alone. One day, the kids decided to ask me if I wanted to play a game, and I said yes, thinking they were going to warm up to me. Nope not a chance. I went to fix my hair into a ponytail and one boy grabbed my jacket around my waist. I tried to say no, stop, but what would happen if I did that? Would he shun me and tell the others and try and get them to think I was the freak again? I finally said no, shoving him away. His friend thought I was rude and ran over to me, punching me in the back as hard as he could, knocking me to the ground. The thing is, if I would have used my words and maybe done something the right way, I might have been able to take care of what happened. I felt so alone, just like Melinda on the first day of school. I had kids tossing wrappers at me because I sat alone, people looking at me when I was in the front, thinking I was childish for doing so. I found your book later, towards the beginning of the eighth grade. When I was reading this book, I thought about when something difficult happens in a person's life, they have choices and consequences in how to handle it. Many people judge each other even if they don't know them well. Do not be quick to judge a person because you may not know what is truly going on with them in their personal life. For Melinda, 
It was more than many could imagine. We all have to come up with a number of designs to express ourselves and our emotions, and for a lot of people, like myself, it can be a challenge. We fear telling the truth and speaking our minds, wondering if we will be rejected. No one deserves to be teased or bullied. You should always get a chance to tell your side of the story, no matter what. Speak helped me stand up, not wanting to be teased anymore. It was a terrible thing, yes, and I hate seeing others go through it. I am very confident now, and if others don't like me, fine. Now, I am the only one many see people seem to like because I speak my mind. I got to see not just um, the students as they appear to me in class, but as they appear to themselves and the inner self that they kind of hide sometimes from their teachers. Letters About Literature contest tells them a specific number of words that they have to use and it also instructs them very specifically to not regurgitate what the book was about but to talk about their connection to the book. And I think that that is very hard for a lot of people to put in writing and this student as you saw was very passionate about how she connected with the main character and I think having that required number of words really forced her to go beyond the obvious and really delve deep into how this book affected her and I noticed a change in her partly through writing this letter but also when she won the contest there was a real a sense of accomplishment and also confidence in that I am good at English and I can succeed in school and I can be confident in my writing and that was a really neat thing to see a student connect with a piece of literature and then take it to the next level and put it down in words and then get positive feedback back from the contest. From my perspective as a school librarian I see uh, youth make, making a great connection with literature when, when they have a personal experience that, that relates to it in some way. In the act of writing a letter to an author, the student is given a chance to explore their own feelings that are similar to what they connected to in the book. And it gives them a chance to, to stretch themselves beyond just the experience of reading the book, um, but they're participating in the literature in a different way. River of Words is another literary competition open to Nevada students in which the student submits poetry and artwork focusing on watershed areas where they live. The watershed art and poetry submitted to River of Words is exhibited around the globe and seen by millions of people each year, both in person and reprinted in magazines, books, annual reports, and other media. Every painting, every poem contributes to appreciation of the natural world and the interconnectedness of all beings. As a librarian, I encourage uh, students to participate in, in a contest such as River of Words because it gives them a chance not only to experience um, their, their natural environment, but also experience literature in a different way and participate in uh, creating literature as well as reading it. To have two students this year actually win the contest was huge, not just for those two students, but for the rest of the class who saw them get that recognition and some reward for it as well. I always say when we talk about entering contests, this is your chance for fame and fortune. And they got a little bit of both back and the other students saw that. As wonderful as I think it is for Carson Valley Middle School to have swept the state awards at level two and three, I really hope that other teachers will do this as well because whether you win or not, this is an amazing opportunity for your students to communicate to the authors of the books that have really touched their lives. Both Letters About Literature and River of Words have deadlines in December. For information about both competitions, please contact the Nevada Center for the Book at the Nevada State Library, 100 North Stewart Street, Carson City, Nevada, 89701, 775-684-3340. The Nevada State Library and Archives includes reference and research, library development, the Nevada Literacy Coalition, 
talking books, archives, records management, micrographics and imaging, federal and state publications, and the State Data Center. This state agency is located at the Capitol in Carson City. For more information, please call toll-free 1-800-922-2880 or visit us on the web at nevadaculture.org. And see you next time on Exploring Nevada.